This question wants us to logically complete the text, so let's make sure we understand kind of where this thing is going and then see if we can come up with like our own guess for what the conclusion is going to be. In documents called judicial opinions, judges explain the reasoning behind their legal rulings, and in those explanations, they sometimes cite and discuss historical and contemporary philosophers. Legal scholar and philosopher Anita L. Allen argues that while judges are naturally inclined to mention philosophers whose views align with their own positions, the strongest judicial opinions consider and rebut potential objections. Okay, so strongest... Uh, uh, deal with objections. Discussing the philosophers whose views conflict with judges' views could, oh boy, that's a tough sentence. Discussing philosophers whose views conflict with judges' views could therefore be good, right? This is just repeating what they just said, right? The strongest opinions deal with objections. So if you talk about conflicts, objections, that would be strong, that would be good, right? So uh, that seems easy. Let's see what the choices say. Uh, it could allow judges to craft judicial opinions without needing to consult philosophical works. No, they're talking about the philosophy. The whole point is that they're con they're they're consulting the philosophical works. So no, that's just wrong. Uh, help judges improve the arguments they put forward in their judicial opinions. Well, if you improve something, that's good. So that seems like a very vague way of saying what I said, but that's fine. Um, let's look at C. Make judicial opinions more comprehensible to readers without legal or philosophical training. Well, that's that's making it good as well, probably, but that's a much more specific way of making it good, right? So B is saying it helps judges improve the arguments, and that's what they're talking about. They're talking about the judges' arguments, um, right? Their own, they're aligning with their own positions. Um, you're rebutting things. Rebut is a good SAT word. It means to kind of like um, go against and to kind of prove something wrong. So it has to do with argument. Um, so that's that's the kind of good we're going for. C is going for something good in a different way. So making something comprehensible to readers. But this is maybe changing the main character of the the choice here. The main character of the passage is definitely the judges. Um, this is now talking about the readers of the opinion, so we're switching to the wrong person, whereas notice choice B is still about the judges. Uh, D, bring judicial opinions in line with views that are broadly held among philosophers. No, because they're talking about t getting philosophers that disagree with you uh, as opposed to philosophers who agree with you. So we're getting different philosophers with different views, so it's not, it's not about like getting the one right answer, plus, um, in general, I'm just nervous of things that kind of quantify stuff and saying that views are broadly held. Well, what I mean, how do I know what's broadly held? That's not part of this. So this is just wrong again. So definitely B. And notice it's kind of a vague answer, but it's it's a, a conclusion that seems to follow. They literally just stated this in the, in the end here where we just then copied it because the semicolon is telling us we're kind of repeating what we just said. So I'm not really even doing anything here other than just rephrasing exactly what they said already as a conclusion. So sometimes we have to go further. Not here, it's just kind of already concluded for us, so we're just copying.